Breaking news in a CBS Sports HQ as the NFL free agency frenzy continues. And we begin with Gronk. The tight end, Tampa Bay, coming to one-year, $10 million agreement to keep him in Tampa. Gronk said earlier in the day that he intends to sign one-year deals until he's done with football, but it's a one-year deal in Tampa Bay. Gronk and Tampa Tom sticking together. With more on this deal and a number of others, we welcome in CBS senior NFL writer Jonathan Jones. JJ, uh, some big news here. Seems like uh, it was understood, didn't have to be explained, but now it's official. Gronk staying in Tampa with Tom on a one-year $10 million deal. A little bit of a hometown discount to keep, keep the band back together here? Yeah, and it's probably going to be up to $10 million rather than a straight $10 million. And I'm excited to see the structure of it. As we know, General Manager Jason Light and his staff there, Mike Greenberg included, have been working uh, magic these last several days uh, trying to get the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in position uh, to be able to re-sign these guys after franchise tagging Chris Godwin, of course, re-signing Levante David, inking Shaq Barrett earlier today, getting the extension for Tom Brady to free up the cab space and now you have Rob Gronkowski coming back to playing with his buddy Tom Brady and this is where he was always going to be frankly I know he went on a podcast and said hey you know I'm a free agent I'm gonna test the waters he, he tested the waters for about seven hours <laughs> of the legal tampering window never really bought into that all that much uh, if he was gonna play anywhere he was going to play with Tom Brady so long as Tom Brady is playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So not at all a surprise that he is back. Not a surprise that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers made it happen. And finally, not a surprise that Rob Gronkowski took less to play for the Bucs in pursuit of yet another Lombardi. Yeah, uh, Brady and Gronk, as is well documented, the most prolific duo in the history of play in the of the NFL playoffs. Uh, again, two big ones in the Super Bowl a year ago in that win over the Chiefs. As for the season, it was 45 receptions, 623 yards, seven touchdowns. JJ, in what you saw out of Gronk last season, do you have any lingering concerns uh, about the health or, or just sort of the viability of this athlete moving forward as their go-to at tight end? Yes, there is depth there at the tight end position, but in terms of Gronk's future with Tampa, still a viable option. Yeah, I, I think that he's very much a viable option. I don't see why they can't uh, run the same formula that they ran in 2020 moving forward. Gronk doesn't need to be the number one tight end. Uh, we saw him get back into football shape early on in the season, and he wasn't utilized that much, at least in the passing game. And then as the season wore on, uh, Tom Brady began to trust him a little bit more. I think Rob Gronkowski began to trust himself a bit more in the offense, and they began clicking. And we know what he was able to do uh, in the playoffs, including those two touchdowns there in the Super Bowl. So I think he offers a security blanket, no doubt, to Tom Brady. Uh, he offers uh, being the best blocking tight end, uh, perhaps in the entire NFL, but certainly on the team. And they have plenty of talent around him to where you don't need him to play 16 games, though he just did for the first time in a very long time. You don't need him to be a thousand yard uh, pass catcher. Uh, what you need from him is just a solid A. Go out there, get me 550 receiving yards throughout the season, be healthy enough to make our January run, and be there when we need you in February. And that's exactly what he did this past. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.